Hi, everyone. Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs, The Secrets of Success. Today is Wednesday, February 25th. My name is Deborah Bailey. I'm the founder of Deb Bailey Coaching. Visit my site at dbaileycoach.com for information on products and services for entrepreneurs. I uh, specialize in helping entrepreneurs uh, get unstuck and make the leap to the next level, or also for people looking to transition into entrepreneurship. So I'm just going to get started because I'm so excited to welcome my guest, Lori Grenier. Um, she's very often on QVC, and, and I'm definitely a QVC person. So um, I have a, a product of Lori's, and I've been really wanting to order more, but I'm not sure where to put them all because there's so many wonderful things that she makes. So we're going to get started and learn more about what she's doing because um, I'm, I'm really excited, and I, I've told her that when, uh, when we signed on this morning. Um, so I'll introduce her. Lori Grenier was always thinking about ideas for products. She would then see something identical to her idea on the bestsellers list or in the store and say, why didn't I do it? When Lori came up with an idea for an earring organizer in 1996, she got her husband on board and said, this time let's do it. And that's exactly what she did. From finding a patent attorney to market research across Chicago neighborhoods, even camping out on Michigan Avenue with her organizer, stopping ladies that walked down the street to see if they liked it, to finding a tool maker, injection molder, packaging supplier, graphic designer, and more, Lori was on the right path to discovering what it took to become a successful inventor. Lori has been inventing products ever since that helped make people's lives easier, more organized, and fun. Currently, Lori holds over 71 U.S. and international patents and has conceptualized and brought to life over 100 clever and unique products. She's become a brand due to her innovative, practical, and aesthetical, sorry, aesthetic designs for her home. Grenier not only makes homes beautiful, she organizes them. In addition to being the creative force behind her company, For Your Ease Only, Incorporated, Lori has also accumulated quite the following as a QVC TV personality. Lori has her very own show, Clever and Unique Creations by Lori Grenier, appearing live each month on QVC TV. Each product in her personal line was developed to solve a problem she encountered in everyday life. She sought to develop a solution to share with other frustrated consumers. For more information, her website is lorigrenier.com, or you can also find her on qvc.com slash lorigrenier. So we have... Uh, the phone line, if we have time to get the questions, it's 646-478-0491. Also, the chat room will be open. So, hi, Lori. Welcome to the show. Hi, Deborah. So happy to be here. Oh, I'm so happy for you to be here. I was, I was telling uh, Lori that not only do I own products, I gave it as a gift. I'm looking for more. I'm always watching QVC, so I've, I've seen her for quite some time, and I'm just so excited to really be here to hear her story. Um, so, Lori, you know, please tell us how you got started on this road here. Well, you know, as you were saying, I was always thinking of ideas, but then mm -hmm. I'd start to do them, I wouldn't finish it, or I'd be halfway through, and then I would see it, um, same type of concept or same idea on the bestsellers list or in mm -hmm. a store, and I'd say, oh, that was my idea. Why didn't <laughs> I do it? Why didn't I finish it? So when I came up with my idea for an earring organizer, which was a – small earring organizer with sliding stands that held piercer clip earrings where they would hang, mm -hmm. like a store display, I just said, well, I'm going to do it this time. And I did. Wow. That's excellent. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long journey. <laughs> but uh, I, the funny thing is when I, I look back at it, um, I think that every inventor – of a product thinks that their product is the best thing in the world and that mm -hmm. everybody's going to buy it. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. um, it's good to have that optimism because that's what keeps you going and that's what pushes you out there to do it. But um, I, it also, the reality of it is, is that you really have to put in the hard work and the long hours to make it happen. Mm -hmm. it do, it's not going to just happen poof overnight. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of people try to sell people that it's, it's you know, they can instantly uh, achieve success. And, and I think your story definitely tells us that it, 
it takes a while to get where you want to go, but you have to act on it. Exactly. You have to act on it, and you have to be willing to put in. And it is long, hard hours. Mm -hmm. But if it's your passion and you're really serious about it, I do Mm -hmm. believe that anybody can make anything happen. They just have to be tenacious and keep striving forward, doing Mm -hmm. whatever it takes to make their dream come true. Wow. So how does how the process begin for you? You you have an idea, and then and then what do you what is your next step? Well, I start with my idea, and mm-hmm. then forgive my phone ringing. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will start with an idea, and then I we will actually draw it. I will sketch it on paper, mm-hmm. and I'm not the greatest artist in the world, so I'll sit, draw it, put it down. Then my husband, who's much better. Um, and drawing line drawings will then take my uh, scribble and then he'll turn it into something that looks very good. And then we will send that over to our factories. It's actually that easy for us um, as far as just good old-fashioned line drawings, mm-hmm. and then we'll send it to the factory, and they will make us a first-piece sample. Mm, okay. And then from that first sample we get, We'll continue to make improvements until it's exactly what I want, mm-hmm. and we have our finished product. Wow, what's what's the average time? Is there an average time it takes from from the idea to when you actually see a sample of it? It depends on what the product is made out of. Mm-hmm. For me, what I call cut and sew would be any product that's made out of a fabric, mm-hmm. and when it's made out of fabric, it's very it's pretty quick to get a first sample might be a couple of weeks Mm -hmm. but if I'm doing something out of wood for example one of our silver safekeeper jewelry boxes depending on the size and complexity of it it could take four to six weeks to get a first piece Mm -hmm. sample Mm -hmm. but that's really not that long when you think about it no it isn't isn't. Um, the injection molded pieces that's products that are made out of plastic that require Mm -hmm. tooling that would take probably two to three months mm-hmm. to get your tools made. and But they, it's even amazing now they can do hand samples mm-hmm. where you can actually get a sample that would be in plastic that would be close to what that tool would make in the end mm-hmm. as well. It's amazing how uh, innovative mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. things are today. Wow. So when you started, before you had all this in place, um, you know, how how hard was it when you had the idea and, you know, you're saying you were camping out? How, how you know, how was it to get from that point where you knew you had this thing until you can actually see a sample, see it start to be created? Well, it's interesting, you know, that people always ask about the camping out on Michigan <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> I didn't pitch a tent. <laughs> I'm just picturing that. <laughs> Which is very funny because if people knew um, Michigan Avenue or it's like it's like being on Madison Avenue in New York or okay. you know, some busy street. <laughs> but um, what I did in the beginning, because my first product was an injection molded product, which means that you have to make tools or molds, people would call it also, mm-hmm. to make the product. It's very expensive, especially if you make these molds in the USA, which I was doing everything in the USA. Mm-hmm. So... Um, my first loan was about $300,000. And when I tell you I was a little bit naive in the beginning, <laughs> I was. I'm thinking, oh, that's okay. I'll sell so many of these. I'll, I'll make that back really fast. <laughs> and, um, wow. I, you know, you don't make it back that fast. <laughs> but I wanted to be careful because my investment was going to be large in the beginning. And I wanted to make sure that women we're going to like my product and buy it. Mm-hmm. And if you don't really get out there and ask a good cross-section of women in a variety of neighborhoods, this is what I thought at least. This is mm-hmm. what I did. I went to neighborhoods all over Chicago, which is a very large city, mm-hmm. and I would stop women, and I had a little prototype sample, and I would show it to them. And I would say, do you like this? Would you buy this? What would you pay for this? <laughs> and I took all of that data and then made my decision that I should go forward, that it would be a good risk mm-hmm. to go forward. And um, then I took out that loan I just told you about. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> yeah, it was a big one. And um, 
fortunately, with a lot of hard work, um, mm-hmm. we we did pay that back. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in, in not too long a period of time. Well, that's good. <laughs> and so, but it was funny because to sit on Michigan Avenue and do that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we were kind of doing it on the sly, mm-hmm. <laughs> sitting off mm-hmm. into the corner of a, a little <laughs> street there. and pull it. But women were wonderful. Mm-hmm. They would all come mm-hmm. over and, and say, oh, sure, I'll help you. It was very rare that somebody would just walk right by right, and not help with their opinion. That's such a great idea, though, because you're just taking it right to the people. <laughs> you know? Right. Well, that's what I thought. You know, I might as well. If you tell your friends and family, a funny thing is often people will say, well, I've showed my friends and family and they all love it. Well, the mm. problem with that is they're your friends and family. Right. right. So, of course, they're going to love it. And then secondly, right. if they tell you they don't love it, they might no longer be your friend. <laughs> That's true. You're right about that. You've really got to got to go out from the nice little cocoon there and see what what real people are thinking about. Exactly, and real people will be honest. Mm, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're they're going to tell you the truth because they feel like they are there mm-hmm. to help you, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they have no connection. Well, that's true, and that's, mm-hmm. that's the best thing. And if they're going to be your your customers, you want to know if it's helpful for them. So how did you get 71, over 71 patents? My goodness. <laughs> well, it's been 12 years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that is a long period of time. And mm-hmm. when I first started creating and coming up with my ideas, um, I felt that it was important because I thought that they were unique and different mm-hmm. to protect mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's different opinions on that. Different businesses do different things. But uh, it was just my decision to Mm -hmm. put emphasis on patenting and um, I'm glad that I did because I am public and I sell on QVC TV Mm -hmm. and have um, done that for 10 years now and so it's very out there Mm -hmm. in you know people see my products the minute I launch them and Mm -hmm. um, so I would try to protect most of everything that I could that I created so yeah, we're at 71, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm fortunate that they were patentable. Uh-huh. And, uh, so when you when you did that, I mean, how did it feel when you got your first patent? Was it just, you know? I was like, thrilled. Mm-hmm. I really was thrilled, and mm-hmm. uh, it was a very exciting moment, and patents look very official. They look wonderful, <laughs> and <laughs> so um, I was just very excited. Mm-hmm. So now I guess you you probably, you know, I'm thinking you have systems in place now for when you start your process and then everything kind of flows, or are there still challenges in getting things to that end point? Well, you know, that's a a good comment because we do have systems in place now. Mm -hmm. It is much easier for me today than it was 12 years ago when Mm -hmm. I was learning everything. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Now I have my connections. We have our factories that we use. I know what I'm doing. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's quick and easy, but um, back then, in the beginning, you really have to search out all the different aspects of what is it going to take to get your product made, Mm. and that can vary from uh, having the connections to a factory, and of course, you have to be careful what factories you use, and that that factory is going to be honorable, that you're going to get what you order. Mm I do think for me, I started in the USA. Uh, that was a comfort level for me. Mm-hmm. And I also liked doing things in the USA. That was something I was mm-hmm. proud of. Um, it can be more challenging sometimes to try to keep all of your sourcing and product creation and production in the United States simply mm-hmm. because of cost. For mm-hmm. certain mediums like wood, it's just cost prohibitive. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Your your product just wouldn't work. The consumer needs a better price. Mm-hmm. 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 So, um, but I, I think in the beginning, when you're first starting, I think people should be careful to do things that are within their comfort zone, mm-hmm. as far as risk. And you know, if it doesn't feel right to you, mm-hmm. don't do it. Reassess it. Look back at it again, and and maybe figure out a way to do something that's in a better comfort level at first. Mm-hmm. Like with anything in life, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that, that's a good point, especially when you're making an investment like that. You know, you really want to feel comfortable with what you're doing. Yes, 
and know that the people that you're working with um, you can trust and mm-hmm. that you have uh, referrals or references, something mm-hmm. that makes you know that that's going to be a good direction to go in. Mm-hmm. So how did you start your um, relationship with QVC? Well, that was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you you submit samples. Back then, uh, you would just send samples in to, I believe it was then to their, cust- their vendor relations department. Mm-hmm. And um, I actually started on Home Shopping Network first. Mm-hmm. I got in, you know, you try to get in where you can. Right. And mm-hmm. I was... It would not be surprising for anybody to know that you may have to call 100 times before somebody <laughs> answers the phone. <laughs> Just expect that. And um, I probably called about 100 times and actually got through to a buyer at the Home Shopping Network. I just wasn't, at that time, I wasn't able to get through to somebody at QVC. Mm-hmm. And the woman that answered the phone said to me that she was moving to Chicago, which is where I'm from, Mm -hmm. in a week. (laughs) And I said, well, I'll hook you up, you know, give you information (laughs) about Chicago (laughs) if there's anything I can do to help you. And she said, I will hook you up with the person who takes my place. Wow. So I gave her, you know, advice and tidbits about Chicago, and she hooked me up, and I flew there and had a meeting and she loved my product and I went on air and it sold out and (laughs) the rest was history. (laughs) Talk about timing. Yes, I do believe in, um, like some people call it kismet, Mm -hmm, (laughs) destiny. mm -hmm. Um, It was a very lucky situation. Oh my goodness, that's great because who could could even think that something like that would happen that way? Right. Right. You know. And I've had a lot of things happen like that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that were just, you know, right. very – I'll tell you a story that I think is yeah. very interesting about what happened to me. Mm-hmm. I explained to you that the first piece was an injection molded piece, a plastic mm-hmm. piece. Well, you need a factory that does injection molding, and you need a tool maker to make these big, huge, steel, expensive tools that mm-hmm. mold the piece. Mm-hmm. And I knew nothing about any of this. And, but I just knew that's what I needed to make the product. Mm-hmm. And I had hired a woman. I sold jewelry on the side. And I had hired a woman named Georgia who worked for me in the little beauty salon where I had like a kiosk and sold the jewelry. Mm-hmm. And Georgia's son was getting married, and Georgia invited us to the wedding. And I go to the wedding, and I'm sitting at a table with about eight other people, and as we're all talking about what do you do, what do you do, they were all tool makers. <laughs> oh, how was that? And <laughs> it wound up that Georgia's husband was an injection molder and had oh. a factory on the west side of Chicago. <laughs> now talk about, That's you know, <laughs> isn't it, right? <laughs> so, um, wow. and I had no idea. I had never talked to Georgia yeah. about what her husband did. Mm-hmm. I talked to her mm-hmm. a ton about her children and mm-hmm. herself. Oh, and goodness. Yeah. That's, so. Yeah, that's really, that was, that's, that's incredible to even think about how that worked out. Right. <laughs> so right. how would that even happen? You know, how likely is that? Someone wrote about that. You say you're, you're making that up. <laughs> right, exactly. And I've had many stories like that happen throughout the last 12 years. That's fantastic. Really yes, I think that, you know, you hear people say you have to have all your senses open. Mm-hmm. And you mm-hmm. have to, like the moral of the story is talk to people, network, find mm-hmm. out what people do. Um, it's amazing how many things come your way, fascinating people, Mm -hmm. finding out, getting connections simply by talking to people. Yes, that's so true. And it may not be that you're talking to someone you think can help you. It can be someone you're just talking to out of the blue, like what you did. You didn't know about that, but just because you had that relationship with her, one thing led to another. Exactly, and then I wound up sitting at that table. Mm -hmm. And you could Mm -hmm. say it was my destiny, too, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. depending on how you... um, Look That's at things. Fantastic. But, yeah. So when you go on QVC, how is that? Because I'm always wondering, like live TV and all this, 
you know, things going on. And I like, love how, it. How is that? <laughs> I love it. I love QVC. It's been a fabulous place for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I have really been able to go from, you know, one product and one mm-hmm. concept to so many and to being able to, I, I would say one of the things that thrills me the most is being able to create products that I can then bring and show to the customer mm-hmm. and get the feedback from them as well. It's so mm-hmm. personally gratifying to me. That is the most gratifying moment mm-hmm. out of everything I do is to hear the customer, as I heard you when mm-hmm. I first called in, <laughs> oh, I have your product, yeah. I love it. <laughs> it makes what I do all worthwhile. It's mm-hmm. my joy in what I do is to mm-hmm. know that I am making women happy and that they're liking the products that I'm bringing to them. Mm -hmm. And so being on QVC is just the perfect arena in which to create products, try products, have customers let me know what they Mm -hmm. think about the product. Mm -hmm. And QVC is just also a a wonderful company and a wonderful place to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've I've meant to visit visit the complex because I'm you know, New Jersey, so I'm not too far from there, but I've driven by there because I went to some gardens over there at one time, but I said, I'm going to come back here and take the tour because once they built that whole complex there, I was just really fascinated to see. Well, you but. have to come and let me know, and I'll give you a tour. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yeah, it is. It's fascinating. It is a, a wonderful place and so professionally run, and mm-hmm. um, it is fascinating to mm-hmm. watch the live show, mm-hmm. and it's a lot of fun, too. So did you have to do any kind of, um, I'd say, training when you went out there to do a live TV, or did you just let it flow when you when you got in front of the cameras? Like, well, it's very funny. You know, as I shared, I did start my first year I was on HSN, and I did start. Mm-hmm. And back then, this is now, this was in 96, 97, so it was mm-hmm. a long time ago. And when I first started, um, there really wasn't that type of training. You know, today mm-hmm. QVC does train new guests that are coming on air. Okay. But um, back then at HSN, it was very funny. I, I showed up. I had my little earring organizer. I had all my little <laughs> earrings on it. I had my favorite outfit. <laughs> and, and I went into the green room. And from my memory, it seems like, you know, within – not too long a period of time, it was like, okay, you're on. <laughs> and oh, <now laughs> and then all of a sudden I was just out there. Oh, and oh. I was with a, a very nice um, a host there. And uh, the product sold out within minutes. Mm-hmm. And I remember mm-hmm. it was just all like this blip. <laughs> you know, it was just <laughs> like I was out there, the lights were on me, I think I moved the earring stands around, she did most of the talking, and it was sold out and it was over. <laughs> So, wow, um, it, but it was a very, very exciting moment. Mm-hmm. It just looks like it would be really kind of, you know, scary when you're first out there, I guess, for the people who first step out there, and then you realize, oh, my goodness, I'm on live TV, and all these people are watching. And I know. never think about that. <laughs> that. You know, that's the funny thing. The one thing I really never think about is that, all these people are watching. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I'm not quite sure why I don't think about that, but <laughs> <laughs> I really better. don't. It, it's very comfortable for me mm-hmm. to be on air, and I think because I have so much passion about what am I actually mm-hmm. doing right. and the product, that that's my focus. And um, the cameras were really kind of uh, alone out there. It's you mm-hmm. and the host. Okay. And the cameras are robotic, so oh, okay. there's not people operating the cameras. Even if there was, though, like in mm-hmm. UBC UK, there mm-hmm. are. You don't really see them or notice them because mm-hmm. you were involved in demonstrating and explaining your product. Oh. So that's really what's on your mind and your focus, mm-hmm. and you don't really think about people watching. I don't worry mm-hmm. about myself. Mm-hmm. I worry that I am conveying and getting across what I need to mm-hmm. about the product. Mm-hmm. So when you when you go, you know, you're on QVC regularly, do you um, usually have, say, a timetable for when you bring out new products, or they just come, you know, as you have the ideas? Well, they really come as I have the ideas. Mm-hmm. I try to just keep 
creating as much as I can and (laughs) bringing it out there as much as I can, um, as quickly as I can, because Mm -hmm. that is really the essence of what we do. Mm -hmm. And that's what um, the customer hungers for. They Mm -hmm. love new and they Mm -hmm. love to to have all sorts of new products coming Mm -hmm. their way quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I just, I'm constantly working on and thinking of new products. Mm, that's exciting. Mm-hmm. So how do you balance all of this out in your life and, and all of this great stuff going on? How how do you find a balance here, or how do you not find a balance? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it's um, sometimes it's challenging to find a balance. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I happen to be one of those people that can do many things at one time. Mm-hmm. And so for me, I think it's um, naturally probably a little bit easier to be incredibly busy because I'm really good at multitasking. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think that you do have to sometimes say, whenever you have your own business, mm-hmm. you never really walk away from it. Yeah. You And that's what you'll hear everybody say that has mm-hmm. their own business. You never get away from it because it is yours and you're responsible for it and you're so engrossed and involved in it that you can't help but be checking your emails constantly mm-hmm. or being accessible and available to anybody that needs you. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so when we go on vacation, it is great. And because we're our own bosses and have our own business, we can go on vacation when we want to. Mm-hmm. You have certain freedoms, but you also are always restricted by being tied to having to answer the phone or check emails or do things that keep the business running. Mhm. Mhm. But I guess it's just the excitement that you're doing what you want to do. Yes, but, you, know. that you have to love doing what you do. Mhm. And that's why I would say to anybody: if you're thinking of starting your own business or creating a product and bringing it to market. Just know that you really have a passion for it so that you will do whatever it takes to get it done, and you won't resent it. You'll be happy mm-hmm. to wake mm-hmm. up and excited to wake up every day and do what you're doing. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's so important mm-hmm. to do it because otherwise it becomes a burden, and then what's the point? <laughs> exactly. If you wake up and you love what you're doing, you'll do whatever it takes mm-hmm. to make it happen. Mm-hmm. That's and true. And I think that that's really the bottom line for mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. starting their own businesses. Mm-hmm. Did you have a business plan when you started? You know, it's funny. We, um, I'm a creative person, mm-hmm. so as you probably know, when you meet <laughs> creative people, they're not mm-hmm. as <laughs> they're mm-hmm. not as uh, defined to laying out a business plan. <laughs> I had one in my head. You know, it's an overview. Um, <laughs> I think that I know. And I'm more concerned about the product and making the product and selling mm-hmm. the product and all of those mm-hmm. things. But you have to, I, I would say, you have to factor whatever costs you factor, mm-hmm. plan on them being double mm-hmm. because you have to pad in for contingencies or things that you don't, you're not aware of. When you're first starting a business, there are a lot of things you're not even aware of that you find out, you stumble upon, or Mm -hmm. come up along the way. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say don't make your business plan the best case scenario. Mm -hmm. Make your business plan realistic. Mm -hmm. No, like I told you, you know, I thought, oh, (laughs) $300,000 loan, that's nothing. You know, everybody's going to buy my earring organizer and I'll make that back really fast. And that's not reality. You know, it's going to take a lot of hard work and, as mm-hmm. I said, 100 phone calls to one place. And mm-hmm. um, it's you have to be realistic. And also, I think, if you're going to risk money, mm-hmm. I knew that in taking out that loan that I could lose it all. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a possibility, and you have to set yourself up for that. You have to say, this could completely fail. Mm-hmm. I will do everything possible so that it doesn't, and I will do everything possible to make this successful. Mm-hmm. But there is always the possibility yes. that it won't work, and you also have to walk into it knowing that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's true. At least you, you know what you're getting. You know, you know what, what you're walking into when you start out. Right. You know, and that, that helps you to at least know what's the worst thing that can happen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And if you know what's the worst thing that can happen and you've accepted it, mm-hmm. you don't have to worry about it. I never stress about 
what's going to happen or will a product work. Mm -hmm. I don't Mm -hmm. worry about that because I know I will make it work. Mm, Okay. Okay. And I think it's a... I think it's very important to have a very positive can-do attitude. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not like for me, I don't know the word no. Mm-hmm. To me, it's how can I? Oh. And mm-hmm. so, I, to me, there's I, there's no obstacle I can't get past. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just have to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, you can figure out anything. Right. You're right. You're right. And that's that's why you've accomplished what you have, because you have that attitude. Right, I guess so, because I'm just full steam ahead. <laughs> so when you come up with a product, are you doing finding things now that you think that you'd like to see, or are you still going and having, you know, focus groups, let's say, or asking people what are they looking for? Is it really well, what's interesting is after I did that with my first product, I really never did it again. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I'm not sure why that is. Um, I, I guess maybe I didn't feel I needed to. Mm-hmm. Um, I never had a loan like that again. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't really still do focus groups or anything like that. I think I have a good idea of um, our customer, again, because QBC is such a wonderful outlet mm-hmm. in which for me to sell and to launch my products, um, I get feedback. Mm-hmm. from the customers. We have a website, com, where people will write to me often mm-hmm. and <laughs> ask me questions or give me feedback or, you know, let me know they like something or they'll say, I really wish you could create a, uh, something that helps this problem. So I feel like I get good interactivity mm-hmm. in that way or from callers that call in on QVC when I'm on air demonstrating. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't really now continue doing uh, anything like that because I feel like I have that fulfilled. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, we have a question from Biz Babe okay. on the, in the chat room, and she says, how important do you think websites are in the success of a business? Well, I have found we did a new website in this last year, and um, I love it. And mm-hmm. I have found that it has been a really great thing for our business um, and how people perceive my business because they can go into it and it shows them all of our products or most of our different products and it tells them about me and it gives them feedback from what customers have said about our products. And I think people really like to be able to go online whatever time they want to and Mm -hmm. look up about you or your product. It also if you didn't have a website, how would somebody find you? You know, For mm. me, they might know to go to QVC. Mm-hmm. And so they could go to qvc.com and put in Lori or Lori Grenier, and they would find me. But let's say that they just saw one of my products in a store or a friend said they got it and they got it as a gift. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if somebody puts in jewelry box or cosmetic organizer or closet organizer, my name's going to come up in Google. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then they'll get to my website, and I think that's the wave of the future. That's what everybody does. When I'm looking for anything, mm-hmm. I Google it, you know, yeah. and exactly. I find it. So I do think it's very important to have a website. Mm-hmm. And that's that's a good point because even though you are on TV, you have that following, and yet you're you're not saying, well, I don't need to have a web presence. You know, you're you're seeing the importance of having having all these things in place. Absolutely. I think having a web presence is extremely important, and it allows people to have um, either find your product, learn mm-hmm. about your product, or have interaction with you, mm-hmm. or us with them. We do right. an enter to win on our website that the customers love. Mm-hmm. You know, every month you're going, oh, I'm going to go enter I know. <laughs> You can tell. I'm like, oh. <laughs> right. See, people love that. They love that, um, you know, it doesn't cost anything. They just mm-hmm. go to our site, sign on, hit enter to win, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they go into the um, pot, and every month a new product is drawn. And I think oh, people really? love that we do that back and that right. they have that interaction with us. Mm-hmm. And you're saying you get a lot of feedback from a QVC customer, and I, I know with their website they have all the chats and all these things going on. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm guessing it's pretty immediate when you put something out that you hear back. Um, I 
was going to say on my website mm-hmm. we um, put things out. Like we mm-hmm. do a newsletter mm-hmm. that every month will tell the customers when my show is. Mm-hmm. So if people, mm-hmm. I'm on QVC in and out of my Clever Unique Creations mm-hmm. show, mm-hmm. but when my monthly show is, the newsletter will tell them when it is. Okay. And a lot of people like knowing that because we'll email it to them or mail it to them, and they just mm-hmm. sign up for the newsletter. Um, and they don't, there's a blog mm-hmm. on QVC where people can write to me. I'll blog and I'll put different postings in at different times, um, every so many weeks, and then people mm-hmm. can write back to me that way. Um, I think you're talking about QVCs. They call them the threads. Yeah. I don't really interact with people on that. It's mm-hmm. more like a chat room that the customers okay. have themselves. Mm-hmm. Yes, I figured, how much time do you have? <laughs> I think it's not like that kind of forum. It's more like a customer's forum. Okay. But um, they will definitely, and anybody can uh, easily write to me at lauriegrenier.com, and we mm-hmm. answer everybody. Mhm, mhm. So, and that's so fascinating now that you can really interact across the board with so many people all, all over. Um, right away, you can really hear what's going on, what they feel like, what they want, how they felt about it. You know, everything's so immediate now. Yes, and I love that. I mm-hmm. mean, it's it's just as I said earlier, for me, the joy of what I do really is that interaction with the consumer and the customer. I just love hearing back what they like and that I've made them happy. And I don't think 15 years ago Mm -hmm. you couldn't have any of that. Mm. You know, you really, or 20 years ago, you know, like before even home shopping Mm -hmm. existed, Mm -hmm. um, you didn't have any of that type of interaction. Your product went on a store shelf. Right. And you only knew if your sales figures were good. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But today it's wonderful that mm-hmm. you can interact. So what what is it a day like for you? I mean, are you just like sitting around inventing? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I wish that was all I did. <laughs> because for me, that's the fun the fun part. Um, well, I, you know, I'm the president of our company, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I am running the business. So there's a lot of different uh, facets to running the business. Mm-hmm. I handle the product creation and development, and there's a lot of interaction back and forth that I have with the factories and all of my sources that are making the product. And then, of course, I have constant interaction with QBC or anywhere where we might have our product. Um, There's the interaction with my employees. And uh, I do all the legal work, the patenting. I work with our attorneys for that. And there's just so many facets to running the business that, for me, the average day is just really busy <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um can be filled with a variety of things. Like, today it's wonderful. I'm talking to you. I know. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I am, too. <laughs> that's that's really, really great because you, you try to say, okay, how would it be if I you know, had all that? And what would you be doing? And, and you know, you just have this fantasy that, yes, you'll be there with a the big drawing board and you're just drawing your little <laughs> <laughs> That happens at the kitchen table often. Oh. <laughs> See, kitchen or dining room table right. often. Oh, good. I feel better because I have a lot of stuff on mine, too. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, seriously, it's not um, – it's really basic. Like, you would imagine how would you do it. And it's probably just the same way I do it. You know, you you get those ideas. Or I often get ideas on the airplane. We travel a lot. Oh, okay. And um, I get – I've had some of my best ideas uh, mm-hmm. pop into my head on the airplane because it's quiet time. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. You know, you're not, no phones are ringing. Mm. You can't, well, you can check emails, but uh, <laughs> I don't. And uh, it's just a, it's like a downtime for me where mm-hmm. I can just think. Mm-hmm. So do you carry a pad with you that you can just scribble things out? Or? I do almost always have a pad with me. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And that's always good because you, you don't want to lose those ideas when they come because sometimes something just comes and then you try and remember later and it just doesn't come back the same way. Right. You have to jump right on it right then. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that is true. Or you, you, may, you might forget. You don't forget you ever had the thought. Yeah, and then it's like, oh, what, what happened to that thing I was trying to think? You know, you, you, you have a dream about something and you, you try to remember it and it just keeps going away. You know, you can't, you can't grab it. So I, I 
usually get ideas when I'm driving, so that's kind of hard. <laughs> right, and that's another time where, you know, you're just quiet with your own mm-hmm. thoughts. Mm-hmm. And that's that's true. That's that's a time when you can really start getting these uh, inspirations and mm-hmm. take some time away. So um, this has gone by so fast. We're, we're down to like about um, four minutes. Biz Babe, Babe wants to know, when is your next show? My next shows on QVC are actually very exciting because Mm -hmm. I have my ninth anniversary shows on QVC for my Clever and Unique Creations Hour. So they are March 22nd, and I'm going to give you Eastern times. I am at 2 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Eastern, and 6 p.m. Eastern, and we're Mm going to have really exciting, great shows. I'm uh, launching, I think it's three or four new items mm-hmm. and uh, never seen before. And wow. it's going to be a lot of fun and really a great, great day. So they're going to bake a cake for you, right? Oh, yes, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to talk about that. <laughs> I always wonder, do people get to take their cake home with them? <laughs> I, you know, I was going to say, I doubt that it, it probably gets devoured in the studio. <laughs> That's what I thought. Right, I'm sure it doesn't make it past the hallway. <laughs> I'm like wondering, what do they do with all that food? <laughs> yeah, I have I have taken pieces from quite a few cakes that I've seen come off the set oh, myself. Okay. <laughs> you yeah, think but... none of us ever ate. <laughs> See, now I know. <laughs> goes on. Yeah, it's, it's very funny. Oh, the sugar God. and everybody goes crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and 2 a.m., how in the world do, I see that people do the 2 a.m., like, oh, my God, how can they be so refreshed at that hour? It seems like you'd be so tired. <laughs> it's, it's definitely challenging, um, but I do think that sometimes what happens is you get, like, an adrenaline rush, mm, okay. and you know you have to be on, and you just do what you have to do. Mm-hmm. You do what you need to do. That's true. That's true, and it's it's exciting to be out there. I'm also a night owl, so more oh, challenging see, for works. me. You know, I might go to bed at 1 a.m. every night. So okay. So more then. challenging is 5 a.m., 4 a.m., <laughs> 6 a.m., 7 a.m. Mm. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that would be hard for me, too. <laughs> yeah. You go out there and look like you're awake. It's like, okay. <laughs> right. We try hard. <laughs> well, we're down to probably less than two minutes, Lori. I, I'm... Wow, this is going by so fast. I've just had so much fun. And um, anything you want to share in these remaining minutes or so? Well, I've just enjoyed talking with you. It's been a lot of fun for me, too. You're right. I can't believe when I first heard it would be 45 minutes. I thought, how are we going to talk so long? It's flown, <laughs> it's flown by, and yeah. uh, I've really had a good time. So. I, I, I have, too. I'm, I'm just so thrilled. And um, please, everyone, visit com. And um, I'm sure we will. You'll definitely have people entering for your uh, contest on there because I know I'm going to do it. <laughs> I know. I was going to say, just make sure they put in l o r i g r e i n e r dot com. A lot of times people spell my name G R E N, and then they won't find me. <laughs> but if you put in jewelry boxes, silver safe keepers, we'll you'll find, find me. Okay. Yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Lori, and everyone, please. Um, her show will be archived on uh, blogtalkradio.com slash Coach Deb. So you can listen again or also um, tell your friends that they can hear her interview. Um, so thank you so much, Lori, and I wish you so well on your your anniversary, and, and hopefully one day I'll get over to QVC and then I'll uh, visit and get your tour. <laughs> thank you so much, and you're welcome anytime. <laughs> yes, thank you. So, um, okay, everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's show. I know I did. So um, you can get more information, womenentrepreneursecrets.blogspot.com. We have Lori's bio posted there as well. And uh, please visit her site and see what her new products are and uh, tune in for her anniversary shows. And um, so glad you could all be here today. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us. You can also join in the conversation on Facebook.com slash Women Entrepreneurs and on the website, WomenEntrepreneurSecrets.com. And don't forget to listen in on DVCoach.Podomatic.com and on iTunes.